Hi everybody, welcome. It's Phil Ralston from 930 Service on Sunday. Welcome to Christ the Servant Lutheran Church. What a great valley we live in. I just want to say I hope you enjoy service with Pastor Dave and Pastor Diane. See you next week. Thanks, Phil, for that great introduction. Welcome to worship at Christ the Servant from our living room to yours. We're honored that you have chosen to worship with us this way today. So let's turn up the volume and let's get going. Started. <laughs> Pray together. Dear Father, Father I, ask I ask you to give me strength to live this day as you would have me live it. Guide me in shining with the light of Jesus Christ in my words and actions. Fill me with your spirit so that I may be for others an instrument of hope, peace, and love. Use me to bring joy to others so that they may understand the life you desire for all your children. Amen. to God all the earth. We give to you all 
all our praise With hearts and voices all our days Our lives of thankfulness we bring Gather together, hear us sing Glory to God in the highest Sing glory to God all the earth Glory to God in the highest Sing glory to God all the earth Jesus Christ, God's only Son Victory over death you won Take away the sins of all Give us new life and hear us call Glory to God in the highest Sing glory to God all the earth Glory to God in the highest Sing glory to God all the earth Holy Spirit guide our lives Strength and power you provide Help us worship and rejoice Hear us as we lift our voice Glory to God in the highest Sing glory to God all the earth Glory to God in the highest Sing glory to God all the earth Sing glory to God all the earth We are following Nevada's Roadmap to Recovery so you ask, when do we start indoor worship? This Saturday, May 30th at 5.30 p.m. And then on Sunday, May 31st at 8, 9, 10, and 11 in the morning. Four services on Sunday instead of three. So those of you that worship at 9.30, it'll be 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock. We are trying to keep each service under the maximum of 50 that has been set down by the state of Nevada. So please uh, make your plans accordingly and wear a mask. There are some of us that have much more fragile health than you. I am one of those. I take 10 prescription medications every day for the rest of my life because of my cancer, heart issues, and some other health things, 10 prescriptions. So I'm in that dangerous category. Our son Paul, with his cardiopulmonary disease and his kidney failure, most likely would not survive COVID-19. So we cannot risk bringing anything home. So please, you need to wear a mask. So you're wondering, where are the Oreo boxes? Well, we've been adding one Oreo box per week, and we got up to 10, and that's all the boxes I had. So now those boxes will no longer be behind us, but they're back at the church building because we're going to be in there in person worship, but we will continue this same worship online. So we're not going to be changing things because we know that there are some of you who still will not want to go out in public. And we have so many people who are in different locations than we are. Today we have a picture. We have a couple pictures from Jane and Dennis Peterson that show us what it's like where they are worshiping from Wisconsin. So I see these beautiful photos that you send in and, and I think, wow. This is pretty nice. I love to see those photos. And then a part of an email from Jane's cousin in Sweden. So let me tell you what Lena has to say about worshiping online with Christ the servant. She writes, I have been listening and seeing the church services from your church almost every Sunday. And yes, I saw the pictures of you and Dennis and your mothers and the three generations of Peterson on Mother's Day. It was wonderful to see. Today I listened to the service on Memorial Day and could see that it now was 10 Oreo cookies packages, 10 weeks of a different life. I saw the picture from Glacier National Park 
and remember when I were there with your parents and I saw the men and women honored on this Sunday. I enjoy it very much. Then she says she's going to send an email and a picture of her church so that we can show it online to all of you and that uh, she assures us that we have worshipers in Sweden. Just think about that when you're worshiping. So let us know where you are worshiping from. Leave a comment in the section below. Email, text, include a photo if you like. We'd love to hear from you. Like, share, subscribe, comment, do all of those online things. Today in the church we observe Pentecost. And the story of Pentecost comes to us from the book of Acts of the Apostles, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. It's been a long time, hasn't it? The apostles were all together in one place. Now first we have to talk about apostles, the word apostle. Because these are the same as the disciples, except there's a different meaning. The word disciple means student, one who learns from the teacher. An apostle means one who is sent. So first, you're a disciple and you learn everything you need so that you can then be an apostle and be sent out to carry the message and the teaching with you. So we like to talk about ourselves as being uh, fellow disciples of Jesus, but perhaps we need to more talk about each other as being fellow apostles because we are sent out into our world to spread the news of Jesus Christ. So when it says the apostles were all together in one place, it's been a long time, hasn't it? It's been 10 Oreo boxes long, 10 weeks of worship time that we have not been all together in one place. Now we've been gathered together in this digital online format. And we are gathered together as the body of Christ, our church. But we haven't been in the same physical location for so long. For those of you who will be in worship this weekend, uh, I'm sure it will be an exciting celebration, but it will be very different. We may be mourning some of the things that we don't have. We won't be uh, gathered in a very large group of people. It has to be less than 50, according to the state of Nevada. And we won't be singing like we always do because the studies have shown that this illness, this virus, is carried on our breath, even just our breath. It's not by spit or saliva, although it is, but it, it is also just the vapor, the aerosol that comes out of our mouth, and singing causes more of that to be expelled from our mouth, and so all it takes is one infected person in a large room to then pretty soon infect the airspace uh, in a great deal of space around them. So it is recommended by all vocal experts, uh, doctors, don't be singing in church. Now we're going to be wearing masks also, but we're going to really try to refrain from uh, singing much at all. And the way we're going to have music is we'll have our musicians, our band, they'll be able to play the instruments, but the singing is going to be a little harder. We're going to use some of the recorded music that we have of myself and some of our other singers at the church. So it will be familiar voices that will be singing. And the rest of us, well, I don't plan on singing on Sunday because you'll already hear my voice recorded, but I think we're going to be able to, you know, clap along. And some of you might want to chair dance a little bit just to move around to get the feel of the music. And I know, I know we're a traditional mainline denomination, and, and a lot of us were taught that you you don't move in church. You just, you just sit there. Well, some of us had learned that sometimes when you celebrate, you got to move a little bit. So maybe just a little bit of movement for everybody, or maybe a lot. Let's see what happens for those who show up in person for worship. I know there may be even a little bit of fear, uh, not, not sure about being in, in groups since we haven't been for so long, and we've been told every day to be afraid, be afraid, be afraid, and maybe it's time for us to be in church and celebrate. There's enough fear in this world 
but we don't need to carry it into church with us. Now, we are doing everything we can to make it a very safe environment. We're not just saying, ah, come and trust and you won't get sick. We're saying we have made sure. We have taken out over 200 chairs from our sanctuary, and we have spread about 60 around um, because we want some of them to be empty. But we have enough chairs for people to be sit, uh, sitting well over six feet away from other people. We are spread out very much. Uh, and, and we have all of the hand sanitizer that you need and all of the soap and uh, all of the measures that can be taken. We've taken them. We've uh, consulted with our insurance company, and they have a checklist for uh, starting church up after uh, in the time of pandemic, and we have achieved everything on that list. So we are being very careful to make sure that we have a safe environment for everyone. We have air filters that have UV lights inside the air filter. Uh, it, won't, it won't shine on you, so it won't damage your health, but it will kill viruses, and we'll have those running throughout all the worship. And in fact, they run 24-7 at the church now. So all of these things that will be uh, happening uh, for your safety and also for our staff safety. The office will not be open on Sundays for a while, as it always has been. Uh, Alicia will not be in there because her health right now is very fragile as she is going through cancer treatments. So we want to uh, make her as safe as possible also. So that's what's happening when we, the apostles, will all gather together in one place, and we look forward to it. Well, Pastor Diane will continue uh, with the rest of the uh, Acts of the Apostles reading. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came the sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. The rush of a violent wind. I know when I think of the word for spirit, which can mean wind, spirit, breath, that I prefer the song that's called Spirit of Gentleness, Flow Through the Wilderness. But here it's described not as a, not as a gentle breeze, not as a gentle wind, but as a violent wind. Well, those of us who live in Las Vegas, we know something about a violent wind because we have that, especially through the springtime. We've had some of those very, very strong winds. But that, that wind representing the presence of the Holy Spirit. And wind is something that we cannot see wind in and of itself. You cannot see the wind but you can see what the wind does. And so in that way, that is like the work of the Holy Spirit. We do not see the Holy Spirit, but we do see what the Holy Spirit does. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. So not only violent wind, but now these flames, these individual flames, fire is also another way the Bible symbolizes God's presence. Uh, it was a column of fire that led the Israelites as they were on the exodus, as they were escaping slavery, uh, wandering through the wilderness. But God was present as a pillar of fire during the night in order to show God was with them and also God was guiding them. And so that, that fire is another way of showing God is here right now. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. So all of a sudden, these uh, fishermen, uh, just rather common you know, everyday people of that time, were able to speak in other languages as if they'd been educated. They could speak in a way that other people could understand, people who were from other places. Something important is happening, and God wants everyone to be included. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one 
heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretan and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? This was something that was astonishing. These people had been from many other places. They were Jews, but they had originated in different countries, so they were used to speaking other languages. Uh, I have to admit, um, usually when this part is being read, we have one of our uh, volunteer readers who, by the way, always do an excellent job, but it's usually on the day of Pentecost, you, you check the back of the bulletin and you say, oh, who's the reader today? Oh, they get to do the reading with all those names in it. Well, uh, this time, my turn. So it was uh, kind of fun to do that. But anyway, still, there are important messages, God's deeds of power. People need to hear this. People need to hear what has God been doing in and through Jesus Christ. And that's such an important message. Everyone needs to hear it so the disciples are able to speak in a way that they can hear. But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. So some people are willing to listen, but there's those skeptics. And no matter what, they're going to try to come up with some negative explanation. I always kind of smile at uh, Peter's optimism because he points out that how could any of these men possibly be drunk? It's only nine in the morning. Well, not so much right now, but we live in a city where the... Uh, entertainment capital of the world, and uh, those casinos are normally open 24 hours a day. So, um, yeah, Peter, it is possible to have uh, drunk too much, even at nine in the morning. But Peter continues. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Peter quotes from the prophet Joel, and he chooses a section about especially the Spirit of God being poured out. Amazingly, not on only a few, not on select people, not on high and mighty people, but on absolutely everyone, old and young, male and female, slave and free, even slaves. No one is left out. No one is left out behind God's Holy Spirit 
is offered, is given to everyone for the purpose of sharing the good news of what God has done through Jesus Christ so that everyone may know that they can turn to the Lord, call on the name of the Lord, and be saved. Alleluia, gift of life. Alleluia, guiding light. Alleluia, word of God. Alleluia. We read from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. My, how we want to hear those words today. Peace be with you. There's enough to agitate us every day. So many of us have even had trouble sleeping because our subconscious is telling us to be worried. And we need to hear that message, peace be with you. And so it's so important that Jesus comes among those disciples, and that's the very first thing he says, is peace be with you. He knows what our greatest needs are. The world of sin all around us can tear us to shreds, and we need that divine voice of Jesus to speak, peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Remember, these are the disciples. And now Jesus says, I send you. So what does that make them? Apostles, the ones who are sent. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Well, that sounds like an awesome responsibility. The way I like to look at it is Jesus is telling us, if you forgive, those sins are forgiven. That's a good thing. That releases you from a burden as well as the one that you are forgiving. It's a release. And he says, if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And I I just don't see that as being as good a thing because... That means I am also retaining those and I am holding on to it. And sometimes we retain the sins of so many others unnecessarily. And we carry that with us and it becomes a burden that can tear us apart. And so we first of all need to hear Jesus saying, peace be with you. And we need to hear him say, when you forgive sins, they're forgiven. Stop holding on to those things that can destroy Peace be with you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, this has been a very interesting season. For many of our young people, they were just told on one weekend in March, don't come back to school, which sounds like every kid's dream. I don't have to go back to school. And of course, the message was, We don't know for how long, maybe just for a week or two, until things blow over. Well, that didn't happen. And so it just kept on being no stay home longer and longer and longer. But it wasn't just for fun and vacation. There was still education that had to take place. Online education, Zoom classes, everybody's favorite. (laughs) Well, it became very difficult, I know, for so many kids to be having to learn at home, not having that personal in-person support of their teachers and that very, very essential socialization with friends, 
face to face. That was taken away, and there's no substitute for that. We forget how much learning takes place with young people just congregating together. And then that day when the announcement was made, there's no more school for this entire school year. It's over, at least in person. You still have to finish online. So all of these young people at the, at the middle of March didn't even get a chance to give a hug to their friends. They just weren't going to see them again in person for a long time. And maybe for those who are seniors in high school, it can be the hardest. Because when they're just coming up to this, this huge climax of being a senior as you get to the end and all, the, all of the events and activities of a senior year, nope, they don't get to do that. They're gone. They didn't get to say goodbye to a lot of their friends because what happens so oftentimes with seniors when they graduate, everybody splits off and goes their own way. Because some go find jobs, some go to another state for education, and maybe you won't get a chance to see them. So for our seniors, yes, very difficult. And then that graduation ceremony that every parent wants their kid to go through to mark the accomplishment, nope, they're gone too. So we're going to try to recognize our seniors right now by showing a little picture show of them, of some parts of their life and we want you to be able to say thank God for these young people and congratulations. Congratulations to Class 2020! Class of 2020. Class of 2020. 
class of 2020. Great job! Congratulations, class of 2020. We love you guys. We miss you. Next year's going to be great. Sky's the limit. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Safely share that peace with those with you now or at time during this week, give a call, a text, send a card. Be sure to say thank you to those working hard for us in the grocery stores, uh, delivering the mail, uh, wherever you might find those people helping us keep safe. You created me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. You will cast me not away from your presence, and you take not your Holy Spirit from me. You restore in me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. You create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. We pray together. Merciful, Merciful God, God, you open, open wide, wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set a feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. Amen. Holy, holy, holy God of power and might, heaven and earth sing. sure that you have some bread and some juice or some wine and then come back to us and join us in speaking these words. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, this is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for giving us new life, feeding us through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for giving us new life, feeding us through Jesus Christ. Send us now from this place to all the world to teach your grace. With joyful hearts we make our way, with thankful minds we sing today. We lift our voice, give glory to God, rejoicing praise, give glory to God. We lift our voice, give glory to God, rejoicing praise, give glory to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Stay in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Lord, for giving us new life. Feeding us through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for giving us new life.